Hello and welcome to Edifying Moments. Hey, look, everybody's hanging out with me tonight. That's right. <laughs> the, the men of the firm, baby, that's faithful, incorruptible, righteous men. Hey, I'm one of the members. I'm, I'm uh, Minister James Jackson. I have with me Minister Joseph Henry. Also, I got my boy Dana Jackson in the building. Right, proud members of the firm. We Amen. represent. We want to make sure the ladies been getting a whole lot of shine with the glow, and I appreciate that. Glory carrying, loving, overcoming women. But it's time for the brothers to step up and do our thing. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna represent for the rest of the members of the firm as we talk about what Pastor has been teaching about, which is learning to fear God, walking in the fear of God, the reverence of God. And so I'm really excited to hear what these men have been learning, what it is that they bring, what it is that they bring to the table, how it's affected these major parts of their life, right? Your, your, your relationship, your marriage, how it impacts your finances, how, how, you, how you deal with your money, and how it impacts you spiritually. Those are the three major things that we're going to talk about tonight. I want to go ahead and go straight and get right into it, just for the sake of time, because it's a, it's a big, broad subject, as you said earlier, it is. but it's something that is so important that we want to, we don't want anybody to miss anything. That's so right. just just let's give me a give me an idea of how walking in what you've learned about walking in the fear of God fear of God how it's impacted your your personal relationship with your wife at home your family life. Tell me tell me a little bit about that. Okay, well for me and for my family we learned a lot a long time ago, and I try to teach this to my kids. And I share it with anyone that, uh, that, I, can, that I talk with, is that uh, there's three uh, ingredients to success. It was for me. One is love of God, love of family, and having a job. <laughs> You've got those three things. Mm -hmm. You're successful, and you can do well, and you will do well in life. Hey, did y'all hear that? Say, say it one more time. Say it one more time. If you've got those three things. What are those three things? Love of God. Love that's of number God, one. Number one. Love of family. Love of family. Is number two. Mm -hmm. And a good and a job. Mm. A some job. people <laughs> some people have those backwards. Job. They will put the job first, mm -hmm. then that's they'll true. put the family, and then if they've got time for God, they'll throw them in there somewhere. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. And so it's backward. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got those things and you understand the importance and the role that God plays in your life then you'll be, you'll be successful. And that is success. Having wow. all the money in the world is not success. Wow. You know, uh, having a car, the biggest house, having the nicest cars. Wow. Those things are material. And eventually when you die, it means nothing. Somebody else, you know, ends up inheriting it. And, and you realize when you're on a deathbed, you don't think about, oh, I got to get to, to my job. What are they doing today? At that point, you're thinking about God. Thinking about God. Or you think about your family. Come on. Those are the main things you're concentrating on at that point. So uh, that's what it's been for us. And awesome. what I mean us is, is me and my family and anyone that's in my circle. Come on. That's what we've always talked about. And those are key points for us. Wow. That is, that's some solid info. That is something, just that alone right there is something to chew on for a few days. Those three, those three areas being that fear of God and your love for God being the foundation for everything. How long have you been married? Right? I've been married for 37 years. 37 years. 37, 37 years. years of marriage. And he's years. still wanting to make sure that, number one, God is first. Fear of That's God. Right. Fear of God. So let me ask you a question. Then. How, how long have you been married? I've been married for seven years. Seven years. So we've got two different ends of the spectrum. We've got 30, seven. 37 and we've got seven. 37 and 7. Now, I've been married for almost a year now. I just want to throw that, <laughs> throw that out there. You're a baby. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a baby in this thing. But I, I've been married for almost a year. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the perspectives. So from 37, at 37 years, he's still focused on the fear of God. Where are you? How things? How has things changed when it comes to how you view your marriage, how things have been going, just with the idea of fearing God? And how has that impacted things at home? Uh, you actually... Uh, Sunday ago, Sunday or two ago, said uh, something about fearing the God and your spouse. And Who said that? Me? Yeah, that was you. That was me. That was, that was okay. the word. I'll get that to you. Go ahead. But uh, that's, that's pretty much, like the Bible say, Jesus loved the, uh, told the husband to love your wife like Jesus loved the church. So fearing the God and my spouse is, is 
fearing God. Mm-hmm. It just makes me want to walk on the straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. It makes me want to just show my son the right way to do things. And fearing God, like I say, it's the beginning of wisdom. So you can't even be wise unless you feel God. So, yeah. yeah. So the, what you're saying is it's created a a pathway for you to follow. Yes. Fearing God has created boundaries in your life. Yes. And it's it's set a certain type of behavior. Absolutely. You. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. So even in that, right, fearing God. So we're talking about the fear of God in your family. Let's shift over a little bit uh, to your finances because mm-hmm. Finances, the, the Bible compares, well, not compares, but it talks about the struggles between mammon and God. In other mm-hmm. words, the struggles between uh, worshiping or serving the dollar mm-hmm. versus serving Almighty God. So tell me a little bit uh, in your, in, in what, from what we've been learning, from what we've been teaching, how has that impacted how you deal with your finances, your money, things of that nature? Uh, it basically, when you fear God, you give God access to all of that. It's no more what mine, mine, mine is God. You could have it for whatever. Ooh. If I got it, it's yours. Ooh. I know you told a testimony a while back, right? Yes, you, sir. you were dealing with some things. Why don't you share a little bit about that and how that played a part when fear of God when it comes to your finances? Well, fearing God, like I said, it was basically God having all access. No matter the situation, because God may put you in an uncomfortable spot, but it's to catapult you further. And that was pretty much my situation. He, you sow, and I was, obedience is better than sacrifice. We mm-hmm. sold, we didn't have much, but God still made a way. All bills was paid, everything, it was like God, it was like everything was working out. I couldn't, nothing wrong could happen in that specific situation because I had listened to what God had told me to do. Because I had released that money, because I had had gave God access to my finances, I fear Him that much. Man, you can have it all because what you're doing for me, nobody else could do. Oh wow, wow, that's that's good, that's good, that's good. That reminds me of something that uh, Pastor was talking about uh, the other day. He was talking about Daniel. Remember that? Yes. And he was saying how uh, Daniel was walking blameless. He was like, "Look, I fear you." You come first, so I'm going to do whatever it, whatever that is, whatever that behavior is, regardless of people's opinion and how it looks and all that stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And that got him into trouble. You remember that? I do. The fear of the Lord uh, for, for, for me, for my family, and just like he said, you know, my wife was the one in the family that pushed the family to go to church initially. Wow. It wasn't me. Mm-hmm. And me being the man, it should have been me, but sometimes what happens is, for whatever reason, God instills in women in a lot of cases uh, that desire to go to church. And so we see our wives do what we're unwilling to do, and eventually, Mm -hmm. if we're wise, because there's, you know, the difference between being wise and being smart, intelligent. You know, wisdom basically is using the intellect that God gives you. I mean, you have people out here that's smart all day long, but you know, if they walk off a bridge, that wasn't very smart. You know, <laughs> wisdom is, okay, I see a bridge, I see that it ends, I'm not going to walk off of it. And like so, that. you know, when it comes to uh, the fear of the Lord, you know, we have to use that and apply that every day to mm-hmm. our lives, the things that we do and the decisions that we do. So mm-hmm. fear of the Lord teaches and it, it makes most people not make the mistake or, or put yourself in a situation where, you're abusing alcohol, abusing your wife, um, cheating on your wife. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you want to raise your kids the right way. You want mm-hmm. them to grow up and be an example, you know. And the wrong example is to end up in jail or something like that. You want right. to be the one that works, takes care of your family, and be a role model that wow. other people want to follow mm-hmm. after. And having the fear of, you, of the Lord in your life will enable you to be that type of a person. Wow. Yes, sir. Come on, come on, come on, yes, come on. So what we're saying is that the fear of God is so important because all of the different hats that we wear, right? Yeah. I wear the husband hat. We all wear the husband hat. Uh, we all wear the father hat. Mm-hmm. You know, we all wear the provider hat. Mm-hmm. But all those things have to be founded on the rock. Right. 
everything has to be done with the fear of the God, fear of God in mind. Right. And so that is the that's the main point that we've been trying to get across. Y'all got any any last words? I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure we don't we don't miss anything. Any, any last words before we before we end this? Well, I think for anybody that wants to be successful in life, you got to have a strong foundation. If you want your household to be strong, if you want your marriage to be strong, if you want your kids to be raised in the admonition of the Lord, you have to have a strong foundation and. For us as men, we're supposed to be the example, and we've got to set the foundation. Mm -hmm. And and what I would say and suggest to anybody out there that um, that's newly married or looking to get married or is seeking after God, if you want to be successful and you want to live a blessed life, because you know a lot of people just live life, but mm -hmm. if you want to live a blessed life, you got to have that strong foundation. Got to have it. Got to have a strong, firm foundation. Man. Firm foundation. Dana? Yeah. Basically, to add on what Brother Henry said, that firm foundation, you got to be able to, to to reverence God, look at God, and you got to be able to realize that your actions have consequences. Mm -hmm. and, if, and as a man, like Brother Henry said, the, the, the things you do affect those around you. Come on. And if you keep that in mind, yeah, that our God, like, I know my actions have consequences. And I know you plan on using me. And so if you keep all that in mind, the fear of God, fear, fear of God, he, yeah. Hey, come on. Right. Come on. I see that. I see that. Man, a lot of things that we talked about, I think, are so important. Um, it's life changing. And it is just a simple paradigm shift. It is simply saying, God, you are so important. Mm. You have so much value in my life that everything that I do has to run through that. Absolutely. My entire life, there is no area of my life that I do not allow you to shine your light in because I want all of that to go through you. And so that's what fearing God is, man. I, look, it is, it's, it's something different when, you, when, it's, when it's brothers up here. Um, Brother Henry, you said it. You said it so plainly. You said that your wife used to be the one that championed the church trips. Like, hey, right. we going to church this Sunday. Right. We going, and then when you filled that role, everything kind of lined up. That's right. You know, because that's who we are. Mm. That's who we are. That's who we are. We are the priests of the household. That's right. We are the priests of the household. We're supposed to deal with our with our wives with love and love them the way Christ loved the church. And what did He do? He died. Yeah, that's exactly right. He died. And so that's what we're supposed to do at the house. That's what we're supposed to do at, at home. And so walking in the fear of God shifts that. And it, and it lets us know, hey, it's my job to make sure that I sacrifice. That I, I sacrifice for my family. And so if I'm tired, one of the things that I do with my sons on the way to school is I, is I ask them two basic questions. I say, hey. What's a man do? And their response is, a man take care of responsibilities. And I say, what's the man's responsibilities? He says, to protect, to pray, and to provide for his family. That's a man's responsibility. Right. My sons know that by heart, and they say it every morning. And that's something that we want to instill into our children every single day, every chance we get. And we want to do that by example. Exactly. Right. Not, by, not by words, but by example. So our fearing God and the way we move and how we talk and how, how we deal is because we want to make sure that we are training those that are coming after us. We're leading our family. Man, it's, it has been fun doing this. We got to do this again because I think, it's my personal opinion, I may be biased. I think our <laughs> edifying moments are just better than everybody else. Is that right? That's is what that I think. Right? I think okay. that when we do edifying moments, like it's just the revelatory power of God <laughs> that flows through Amen. when we do it. So Amen. I think we need to do this more often, man. Firm, Firm. faithful, incorruptible, Corrupt righteous men man. stepping up and doing what God called us to do. Amen. 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 All right. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Or we, we walk, walk by, by faith, faith and not by, by sight. sight. Life Construction Church, church building, building the, the kingdom, kingdom of God, God one, one life, life at a time. time.